Amen? Amen. So um, we are in the midst of a summer series entitled The Kingdom of God is Like. Eileen and I are doing this series together, and we're having fun. I hope you're having fun. I hope you guys are having an amazing, I'm going to back up a little bit, an amazing summer. Um, we've talked about how the kingdom of God, because Jesus used natural things to explain spiritual truths. Jesus would use natural things to explain what's happening in the unseen world. A natural to explain a supernatural. And so we've talked about how the kingdom of God is like a building. We talked about how the kingdom of God is like a family. We talked about how the kingdom of God last time, like the kingdom of God is like a buffet. Come on, some of you, that was your favorite one. Come on, just tell the truth right now. Some of you love to buffet your body. and you Because why? Because the kingdom of God is like a buffet. So often we treat God like he's a full-service restaurant where we plop down and we place our order and we wait for God to bring it to us. No, it's a buffet. It's already bought. It's already paid for. It's already available. It's already waiting there. You just got to go get it. By faith, you have to go get it. I mean, it's like a buffet. It's not a full service, man. You quit. Some of you say, I'm waiting on God. No, God is waiting on you to get up and go get what he's already paid for. So we talked about how the kingdom of God is like a buffet. Today, for just a few moments, especially with this theme this week was the parables of Jesus, you know, and, and, and illustrations of the parables of Jesus. So today we're going to do... Uh, um, some illustrations and try to track in the in the teachings and the parables of Jesus. So today we're going to talk about how the kingdom of God is like a vineyard. The kingdom of God is like a vineyard. John chapter 15 verse 1. Jesus said, I am the true vine. My father is the husbandman. Every branch of me that beareth not fruit, he taketh away. Every branch that beareth fruit, he purgeth it, that it may bring forth more fruit. Now you are clean through the word which I have spoken unto you. Jesus said, abide in me and I in you. Abide in me, in me. And Jesus said, I abide in you. As the branch cannot bear fruit of itself, except it abide in the vine, no more can you except you abide in me. Jesus says, I am the vine, you are the branches. He that abideth in me and I in him, the same bringeth forth much fruit. Listen to these words. Jesus said this. It's in red letter. For without me, you can do nothing. Wow. I'll read it one more time. For without me, you can do nothing that will ever matter in time or eternity. Amen. If a man abide not in me, he is cast forth as a branch and is withered. And men gather them and cast them into the fire and they are burned. If you abide in me, how many of you believe Jesus said what he meant? Come on, how many of you believe Jesus said what he meant? Amen. How many of you believe he meant what he said? Amen. Listen to what he said. If you abide in me and my words abide in you, you can ask what you will and it shall be done unto you. I'm going to read it again. If you really believe it's in red letter, Jesus is talking. I believe he said what he meant and meant what he said. If you will abide in me and my words abide in you, you can ask what you will, not what he wills, what you will, and it shall be done unto you. Amen. Herein is my Father glorified that you bear much fruit. So very quickly we want to talk about a vineyard today. Yeah, here in the scripture we find four levels of fruit, four levels of productivity in your fruit life in Christ. The first stage is no fruit. The second stage is fruit. The next one is more fruit. And the last one is the one that the Lord is glorified in. That's when you bear much fruit. Then are you, he says, then are you my disciples. That means you're following Jesus. As you follow Jesus, this is the progression. You will bear much fruit. Now notice in John 1 and 15 and verse 1, he says, I am the true vine. When you hear God saying those words, the true vine, that means there's always a fake one. And it's so important for us to be connected to the true vine. 
Rather than following, rather than seeking after false vines, no, we need to seek after the true vine and get connected so we can go from no fruit to fruit. Amen? You know that there's a popular tree, and it's a non-fruit bearing tree today. And there are too many Christians fall in that category, too many people fall in that category. No, here at Family Faith, we're falling in the category of fruit, more fruit, and much fruit. Amen? We are progressing in those things. And so the first way for you to uh, enjoy fruit or for others to enjoy fruit from your life is, number one, you need to be planted. You need to take yourself and plant yourself in the true vine and stop following false vines. There's a lot out there. Plant yourself in the true vine in the will of God. That is the will of God for your life. What is the will of God for my life? The will of God for my life is to be connected to Jesus, the vine. It is to be in the house of God. Jesus is the word, so it's for him, you to hear the word of God. For you to consistently hear the word of God, you'll know the truth, and the truth will set you free as you continue in the word of God. For us to be planted, that is the blessing. That is the blessed life. Psalms 1 says, Blessed is the man who doesn't walk in the counsel of the ungodly or stand in the way of sinners or sit in the seat of the scornful. But his delight is in the law of the Lord and his law. He meditates day and night. And he will be like a tree planted by the rivers of water who brings forth his fruit in his season. His leaf won't wither and whatever he does will prosper. That's you. You're fruit bearing. You're not just going to bear more fruit. No, you're going to bear much fruit. But first of all, you got to plant yourself in the Word of God, in the will of God. The will of God is Jesus. Jesus is the head of the church. That means you're going to be planted in the body of Christ. That means you're going to be planted in church. You're going to not be moved. Like the old song, I shall not be, I shall not be moved. I shall not be, I shall not be moved. Just like a tree planted by the water. I shall not be Come on, how many of you used to be Baptists and you know that song? Let me see your hand. Come on, everybody was Baptist at least once, amen? Come on, hold up your hand. Who used to be, how many of you ever heard that song? Maybe you weren't Baptist and you heard that song. If you know it, sing it with her one more time when she sings it. I shall not be, I shall not be moved. I shall not be, I shall not be moved just like a tree planted by the water. I shall not be moved. If the singers stop their singing, I will not be moved. If my family persecutes me, I will not be moved just like a tree planted by the water. I shall not so be moved. Amen. 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 And so uh, he's telling us to abide. And so if we abide, we, the way that we, uh, we, we abide is, first of all, to get saved and get connected to Jesus and then stay in the Word. When you stay in the Word and meditate, just think about what you heard. Think about the Word of God. Meditate. It's like a cow. Uh, the, the, actually, the meaning of it is like a cow chewing his cud. And then he swallows the food, and then, you know, goes to his stomach, and then he comes back up, and he's, you know, that's what a cow does. Well, that's where I leave the meaning of it. You meditate on the Word of God day and night, and the Bible says you will be successful. Amen. Oh, so we have no fruit. We have fruit. We have more fruit, and we have much fruit. Everyone in this building, everyone watching by Internet, you fall in one of those four categories. Okay? No fruit. Fruit, more fruit, and much fruit. Jesus said when you start bearing much fruit, man, you're glorifying him. He gets glory. You want to glorify him? One of the ways to glorify him is to bear much fruit. You don't get saved and start bearing much fruit the next day. It is a process of bearing much fruit. It's called growth. Somebody shout amen. Amen. It's called growth. So how do we go from fruit to more fruit? Well, he tells us. He says you have to go through a purging process. Some of you don't even know what that is. Most of you young people say, I don't know what that means. Well, um, a purging process is when literally they come in and, 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 and the husband, which is the father, comes in and he starts cutting back, cutting stuff off, cutting the green stuff off. Start cutting, and literally, when after getting purged, literally, I mean, you know, the, the tree looks naked, amen? How many of you have ever felt naked before, amen? 
I mean, literally, because you felt like God purged you or came in and cut back. Why does God do that? Because left to itself, a branch will favor new growth over more fruit. Left to itself, pretty much every human being will favor new growth over more fruit. More leaves, more green leaves over grapes. Big leaves over big grapes. And how many of you know that the purpose of a vineyard is to bear fruit, not to bear leaves? Amen? Come on, there's too many believers today bearing leaves and not bearing fruit. Jesus said, you'll know them by their fruit. You're not going to know them by their leaves or how green or how big or how what a big deal they are or how much talent they have or any of that kind of stuff. You will know them by their fruit. And so Jesus will purge you and I so that we, and listen, it's not fun, but it's necessary. But I'm going to tell you what I really believe. I believe that you and I determine how much and how often we get purged. Not God. Because I'm going to have you know along the way we pick up junk. We pick up stuff we shouldn't have picked up. Attitudes and do stuff and say stuff. And we pick up some stuff that we don't need. And God says, you know what? If you're going to go to where you need to go, you've got to get rid of some of this stuff. And so you and I, uh, we, I believe, through the power of repentance, through the power of humility, through the power of love, we can purge ourselves through the power of forgiveness. We can purge ourselves so that we're not being purged so often and so much by the Lord. You and I can keep that at a minimal, you know, through the gifts and the abilities that God's already given us. Come on, when you walk in humility with other people and you walk in love and you walk in the power of forgiveness, I'm telling you, that stuff doesn't stick to you. That stuff doesn't become a part of you. Those negative attitudes, that jealousy, that envy, all that other stuff, it does not become a part of who you are because love, humility, and forgiveness will cause it to fall by the wayside. Yes, yes. Amen. And then you just don't want to stop there. No, when you start bearing fruit... God has more fruit, not only more fruit, but he has much fruit. Another level for you to go to. And so John 15 and 7, the way we're going to go from more fruit to much fruit, John 15 and 7 says, If you abide in me and my words abide in you, you shall ask what you will, and it shall be done unto you. Therefore is my Father glorified that you bear much fruit as you will be my disciples, and so shall you be to my disciples. I'm an interrupter. I'm sorry. But anyways, abiding, abiding, what does that mean, to abide, okay? Because listen, I think we put so much emphasis on worship. We put so much emphasis on prayer and all that, and that's very important. But I'm going to tell you through the years something that I think is the biggest key of all that has put people have put less emphasis, and I've been putting more emphasis over the last five or ten years, is just serving God. Just showing up, just moving in the right direction. You see, and that's what this is saying. Hey, if you want your prayers to be powerful, then you better be abiding in me and my word better be abiding in you. Then you can ask what you want in prayer and it shall be done unto you. So when you're serving the Lord and you're walking with God and you're hanging out with the body of Christ and going to church and you're moving in the right direction, the promise is is that your children will serve God. Your relatives will end up serving God. The favor of God will come on your life. You'll have things happen that normally wouldn't happen, not because of all the other stuff, just because you kept serving God. But some of you say, Pastor Jeff, you don't understand. My spouse just left me. What should I do? I'll tell you what you do. You keep serving God. Uh, You say, well, Pastor Jeff, you don't know what just happened. I just lost my business. What should I do? I'm going to tell you what to do. Keep showing up. Keep moving in the right direction. Keep serving God and watch what God will do. He'll turn that thing around from you just showing up and serving God by never quitting. Amen. There's an if there. If you abide in me. That if is a contingency clause. That if is has conditions. And the condition is not God. The condition is you. You see, God's going to do his response already. 
But he's waiting for you to do the abiding so that he can do that it shall be done unto you. Look at the B clause. The B clause is such a powerful clause. It shall be done unto you if you abide in me and my words abide and live in you. My words live in you. You'll ask, live. You know where you they live. They abide. So it's like, excuse me, I'm going to interrupt. Hey, she interrupts me at home. I'm going to interrupt her at church, okay? Okay, so abide. Abide. I mean, when it says abide, it literally means it's kind of like that's where I hang out. That's where I live. That's where I'm at. Did you know that you can only have one primary residence? You, uh, legally, you can only have one primary residence. Now, I, we, Eileen and I, we have a home in Texas. We have another home in Missouri, okay? But I'm going to tell you, I don't abide in Missouri. I abide in Texas. Yeah. Last week, I went and visited our place in Missouri, okay? But I don't abide there. I visit there. I don't live there. I don't call it home. I don't put it down as my address. I visit that place. I abide here in Texas. Too many people who claim to be Christians, who claim to be serving God, they are not abiding in Christ. They're visiting Christ. It is not their primary residence. Their life is built around something else, and they visit the house of God. They visit Jesus. When it says abide, it means it's where you you live, you eat, you sleep, you dwell, you dwell with God. He is the number one giant big deal in your life. Amen, amen. And, and notice, notice the B clause too, that's power. There's power in that it shall be done unto you. Wow, God is saying that he's going to watch your lips and what you say out of your lips, he's going to make sure that it will be manifest. But remember, it's the condition. It's the contingency. It's a condition, a certain power that's unleashed to a certain group of people. It's these people that are abiding. They're not spasmatically just having some kind of experience. No, they are living, abiding in a place. They're abiding in the house of God, abiding in the will of God, abiding in the word of God. These kind of people, these kind of people are going to have a different experience. These kind of people, the Bible says God is going to listen to their words and it shall be done unto them. And it says, herein is my glor Father glorified that you bear much fruit, so shall you be, be my disciples. Those people... Those group of people are going to bear a lot of fruit. You're just going to go around. The word's going to start flowing out of you. I mean, you're going to be like a river. When you walk around people with needs, people who are thirsty, that river is going to flow out of you constantly wherever you go. It's a powerful analogy that Jesus has given to his disciples, the followers of Jesus. To his, and he's telling them, this is the kind of relationship that I want you and I to have. And anybody can have this. It's for whosoever will. He says, I'm the vine and you are the branches. He helps us understand that the branch can do nothing without the vine. The branch is powerless without the vine. He says, neither can you unless you abide in me. So important that this branch abides in the vine. If you want to know how powerful this branch is, you need to take it away from the vine and see what it can do. Well, we cut this off the vine in Huntsville, and it's, it's withering a little bit here. <laughs> I mean, it's withering away. And uh, so you will find out whatever power exists in the branch is only made possible by its connection to the source, the vine. And so as we get connected to the vine, we will find out that there is power in the branch that is only connected to the power source. Amen. So uh, the key word here in this whole passage is you and I understanding what abide means. The word abide is the word meno in the Greek, and it, and it, 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 M -E -N -O, and it literally means to abide. It means to stay. It means to persist. It means like you're there today, but it also means you're still there 40 years from today. It means to abide, to stay, to never move, to, to be planted, if you will. And so um, it, it's not passive, it's aggressive. And that's the thing I think we, we think when we think about the word abide. Well, I'm just going to hang out and abide till you get back, you know. No, it's very aggressive. So we're going to give you three illustrations. This is illustration weekend through the parables of Jesus and illustration through the whole summer. So we brought a few illustrations. The first one Eileen just held up is this. This is a, a branch 
that was broken off of the vine just um, and uh, from its life source just about maybe three hours ago or so. And let me just tell you, I can prophesy to you what the future of this branch is, and I don't even need the spirit of prophecy to do it. I can tell you where this is going right here. And if you stop abiding in Jesus, I don't need to be a prophet to tell you where you're headed. I'm telling you right now where this is. This, this branch right here has got some rough days ahead, okay? It's until if, if it can somehow reconnect, then life can begin again. But this is you without Jesus. This is is you without Jesus. You're just going to keep withering. and Yeah, you may look pretty good now. You may look kind of green now. But I'm telling you right now, just give it a month. Give it six months. Give it a year. You without Jesus is that branch right there. And that's what Jesus is saying in the story. If you so, go through a tough season, keep abiding. Yeah, if you go through it. If you fail, keep abiding. If, fail 31 if people times, fail you. If, if, people if, fail you. If, if people criticize you, if people hurt you, come on. If the if the deacon hurts you, you can't run from God. Let the deacon run from God. You stay there. Amen. Yes. Well, the pastor hurt my feelings. Well, let the pastor get over it. Amen. But I'm I'm not going to hell for anybody. Amen. Amen. I'm not withering for anybody. You can hurt my feelings. You can talk about me. You can make fun of me. But I promise you, I'm going to keep abiding. I'm going to keep showing up for the count. I'm going to keep some of you. You know, Paul talks about in uh, 1 Corinthians how he's pressed in at every side, how that the, there's pressures of life and the persecutions of life are coming in, but they're not destroyed. They're not forsaken. And some of you, that represents your life. The winds have been blowing against you, some of you, for the last two years. I mean, you, every day you get up, man, that wind is pushing against you. Life is pushing against you. But how many of you know we're not forsaken? We're not destroyed. We're not going to lose. If you do what I'm teaching you today, you will win every time. And ultimately, you will win the big game, the big game. You'll make it to glory. You'll make it to heaven. Come on. You just got to keep moving on. Even when you don't feel like it. Even when you don't look like it. Even when other people, you know, are, are pushing you away from God. You got to run twice that hard too, God. Even when the kids are crying all the way to church. How do I do it, Pastor Jeff? Well, another way you do it is by making a life of priorities. And I'm going to kind of show you an illustration I like to do. This is, um, this is some, some of the big, uh, uh, big rocks. Big things. This is your life. This jar represents your life. And as we start moving forward in life and as we start getting older in life, it start, this thing starts filling up. Life will fill you up. The world will fill your life up. I mean, I mean, it, it just fills up. And some of you can look at this jar, and, and in my mind it's full right now because it won't work. And, uh, but uh, but it, I'm, I'm going to get it full. Sometimes you have to do this. You have to work at it and figure out, how am I going to get <laughs> this? This is my life. It's exactly right. Yeah, you know? I'm not going to do all and then, this. Then you need to chisel that. You know, we need to chisel it, and then we can there get we it go. in there. There we go. And then, and then so, so, so this, we could say the jar is full. I mean, I can't get any more in there. But if not, then we can keep adding stuff to it. Amen? We keep adding more stuff to it and more stuff to it. And you can pick that Here. one up. Oh, yeah, it's going to. It's gonna let's, break. Yeah, let's. This, this is this is another big rock. Yeah, there you go, big okay, rock. Okay, now now we could for sure say that the jar is full. Your life gets pretty full pretty quick. Listen, if you don't fill your life up, the world will fill it up for you. They will prioritize your priorities. They will tell you what's important. I'm not going to let this world tell me what's important. I'm going to let Jesus tell me what's important for me to do in my life and to make a priority in my life. Because one of the great secrets to life is figuring out what the priorities of life are and keeping them there. Because there will be enemies that will try to steal your priorities away from you. There are people who think that they're smarter than Jesus, smarter than the Bible, smarter than God. They would tell you, you need to do this, this, and this, and this. But let me tell you something. And you let God determine your priorities, and if you'll live priorities, priorities will live your life for you. Come on, just clap right there. Just, like, right. just act like you got it. Okay, so let's just say that's not full, and some of you are, are arguing it's not full. So now we're going to fill it all the way up. Make sure it's full now. Some of, some of you, some of you would say, uh, some of you would say, well, Pastor Jeff. Now it's full. Come on, if you think it's full now, shout amen. Amen. Well, some of you say, no, there's still some air in there. Let's go with the water and pour it in there. 
right? So this is your life, y'all. Listen, welcome to America. Here we go right here. You think your life's full and then more stuff comes in. Moms and dads end up becoming chauffeurs and cooks and baseball coaches and, 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 and work five jobs and on and on and on. And life just keeps getting busier and busier and busier and busier and busier and busier and busier. But listen, if you are going to do what we're preaching today, you've got to make sure your priorities are in line. So what's the big lesson here? Is listen, the big lesson is, is you better make sure you put the big rocks in first. Because if you don't put the big rocks in first, they won't fit later. Okay, so you put the big rocks in first. You establish your priorities. You don't let anybody, anybody Move those priorities. Jesus is first today. Let me tell you something. When family comes visit, this is for our whole life. When family comes visit and visits us on weekends, we don't stay home with the family. We don't stay home with them. We, we go to church on Sunday morning. And if they want to come, they can come. And sometimes they don't. And they sit at home and they wait for us and twiddle their thumbs until we get back from church. Why? Because I want my family to know, not by just Mickey Mouse words of saying, oh yeah, we love Jesus, but I want them to see with my actions, Jesus is more important than you, than me, than anybody. He's first place. And on Sunday morning, my family and my kids are going to church and you can sit here or you can go. It doesn't matter, but it's just not something we say. It's something that we live as a priority in our life. I would go visit other family members at their house. <laughs> Guess what? They didn't set my priority. We're going to do this, that, and that tomorrow. Guess what? I'll be in church. And I'll, I'll meet you all over there. Because it's a priority of living, not just something we say. It's something that we live. We put the big rocks in first, and we live by the big rocks first. Come on, shout amen. Because your life is going to fill up. You're going to get busy. There's just so many things pressing in in this culture. And so, number one, I, I threw my, 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 my leaf down there. But number one, make sure you stay abiding in the vine. Number two, if you want to abide, you got to make it a priority. If you're going to abide, it has to be a priority. It's not a question of whether we're going to church on Sunday morning. That decision was made 30-something years ago. Amen? My, my kids growing up, they didn't have to ever guess not one time what was going to happen on Sunday morning, what was going to happen on Wednesday night. They knew that Jesus was first in our family. They knew there wasn't a question of whether, and we would make sacrifices sometimes to make sure that we're in the house of God. We're the only pastors we know who when we go on vacation, we go to church. That's so funny. Other pastors laugh at us. They laugh, they you go to church when you say, Yeah, I don't like most of the time, yeah, we go to church. And but anyways, I'm just telling you, it's just it's a priority. Can somebody shout amen? And then the third thing, I'll even put your life jacket on. Now, I'm gonna give you one more illustration of what it means. I want you to know what the word abide means. All right. Um, do, do you like our life jackets? Okay. We've had these for about 10 years now. Bill and Kathy got us these life jackets, and uh, we like them so much, we keep them in our closet and don't let anybody else wear them. So we only wear the, oh, that's why they still look so good, okay? But we keep them in our closet, and we, and we uh, um, and, and that's, that's why they look great like this. You want to get... So, y'all, this, this is another illustration that I don't want you to ever forget of what um, it means to abide. If, if, if I were to take you, if I were to put these life jackets on every one of you and take you out and dump you in the middle of the Atlantic Ocean or the middle of the Gulf of Mexico, any ocean, 200 miles out on the ocean and dump you off, as long as we have these life jackets on, Eileen and I are going to just sit back and do the backstroke. We're going to literally just sit back and we're going to just, man, everything's going to be pretty good. We're not too concerned. A little concerned about sharks, but otherwise, amen, we're doing okay besides that. We dwell in the secret place with our, with our, with our safety on, okay? And this is what it means. This is abiding. 
We, this is abiding, okay? This is abiding right here. But let me tell you what I've seen. You can, you can do it this time. Let me tell you what I've seen people do. I've literally seen people in the middle of the Atlantic Ocean, in the middle of life, in the middle of a crisis, in the middle of a dangerous world, take their life jacket and throw it off in the middle of the ocean. I've seen it over and over again. She just stopped abiding. Not me, baby. I'm going to keep on abiding. I like kicking back. I like peace. Because what's going to start happening pretty quick is she's going to start struggling. She's going to start dog paddling, and she's going to start dog paddling faster and faster, and eventually her life is going to start struggling. Why? Because she stopped abiding in the thing that God put connected her to. Come on, why would you throw your life jacket off in the middle of the ocean? Why would you do that? Yet people do that all the time with Jesus. And then I'm gonna, I'll prophesy her future now. She's going to start struggling. She's not that great of a swimmer. She's going to struggle bad. Amen? She's going to start struggling, and then she's going to start panicking. And eventually she's going to start drowning. And people say, I wonder what happened. I wonder why. I'll tell you why. She stopped abiding. Come on, she stopped abiding. She cut the source of life, the one thing that kept her floating in life, the one thing that kept peace in her life, the one thing that kept her out of danger, the one thing that kept her out of all the struggles that most people deal with, the one thing that kept her from panicking, the one thing that kept her from drowning in life, she threw it off. The one thing that could help her. Because I'm not sharing my life jacket. We both go under. Amen? Come on. You got you to gotta hold on to your own life jacket. You can't live off mama's religion. You can't live off grandpa's religion. You can't live off pa Pastor Jeff's religion. You have to connect and abide yourself. <laughs> Pastor Jeff, nobody, nobody would do that. Listen. I've been pastoring for a long time. We both look young, especially her. Amen? We've been doing this for a long time, and you can't imagine the number of people I've watched do exactly what she just did just now. I don't want you ever to do it. And if you, because listen, the devil's number one goal is to get you to quit. That's his number one goal is to get you to quit. Throw in, stop abiding, cut off from the vine, and throw off the life jacket. His number one goal is to get you to quit. If he can't get you to quit, he wants to wear you down and wear you out. That's his goal in life. That's, that's, that's the enemy's strategy for the last days is to, number one, get you to quit. And listen, I got news for you. Like I said, we're not quitting for anybody. This jacket is not coming off. I'm going to abide. I'm latched on, okay? If you rip it off, my arm's coming off with this jacket. Because I am, I am going to serve God. No matter what you do, what anybody else says, no matter what comes in, we are going to keep abiding and abiding and abiding. And listen, God's going to renew our strength so we don't get weary in Jesus' name. And as long as we can keep abiding, you are going to make it through the pearly gates. You're going to ultimately win. One of the great, great leaders of the 20th century, Winston Churchill, was asked to give a speech about his secrets to winning in life. So he was there with all the dignitaries and all the leaders and the professors and all that. And he walks up to the microphone. It's, he's the keynote speaker to speak and give a speech that particular night. And he walks up to the microphone. And this is the total of his speech. This is all he said. He grabbed the mic and he said, never, never. I can't do it like that. Never, 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 never. Never, never, ever, never, ever quit. And he threw the microphone down and went back and sat down and he was done. Don't you wish my sermon was that short? Amen? <laughs> so let me close by saying never, 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 ever, ever, never, 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 ever quit serving God and moving in the right direction. Moving toward God, being in church when the, every Sunday, every Wednesday for the rest of your life. And if you will do that one thing, just keep serving God. Keep abiding. You ultimately will win the battles of life and you'll win the big battle of all of life at the end of the day. So clap and thank God. We're never going to quit. We're never, ever, ever going to quit. Amen. Father, we thank you for your grace, for your mercy, for your goodness. We thank you, Lord, that we are never, ever, 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 
ever, ever, ever going to quit. We may go through challenges. People may betray us. People may walk out on us. People may talk behind our back. People may say things and even do things to us. But we will never quit. We're going to keep on abiding. We're going to stay connected to you and to your anointing and to your power and to your word, to your church, to your body. You're the head and we're the body. And so, Father, we thank you that you're going to help us. You're going to help us in the last days. The last days will be different than any other generation. No question, the last days will be different than any other generation. But we're ready. We're prepared. We're connected. We're abiding. And Lord, we're careful to give you all the praise, all the honor, and all the glory in Jesus' name. With every head bowed, every eye closed, if you're in the building and you say, Pastor Jeff, I'm in church, but I'm not serving the Lord. I'm not where I need to be with God. But you say, today I want to get saved. Today I want to make that connection with Jesus and begin that process of abiding. I want to give my life to Christ. I'm tired of doing it by myself. I want to, I'm tired of doing it my way. I want to start doing it His way. I'm tired of being the captain of my own ship. I want Him to take control. And you say, Pastor Jeff, I want to get saved. If that's you, just lift up your hand real quick. And then put it back down. And with that uplifted hand, you're saying, please include me in this prayer. There's a hand there. God bless you. Anyone else? Just hold it up and you can put it back down. There's another one. God bless you. Anyone else? It says, please include me in this prayer before we leave today. Anyone else? Those of you that lifted your hand and those of you watching by internet, I want you to pray this prayer from the bottom of your heart. It's between you and God. I want you to say it out loud. We're going to say it with you, but just say, Oh God, I ask you to save me. I repent of my sins and I surrender my life. I believe that Jesus Christ died for my sins and arose on the third day. So I receive Jesus and I receive eternal life right now in Jesus' name. Amen. Come on, let's clap and welcome all the people. If you prayed that prayer, if you prayed that prayer for the first time, or if you're a guest today, it's your first time to be here, please go to the red tent and then you come up here. And then also, if you prayed that prayer for the first time, you can text the number on the screen and it'll get information for you also. And um, if you prayed that prayer or a guest, and then we also have a carnival today, is that right? That's right. Uh, if we can put that number up on the side screen, if you did say that prayer for the first time, whether you're watching online or you're here this morning, you gave your life to the Lord or you rededicated your life to God, that's the first step. As Pastor Jeff was talking about abiding, making sure that you're saved is the first step. And now it's hanging on for the rest of your life. Amen. It is the greatest journey of your life. Pastor Jeff has put a, a, together seven secrets to how to help you serve God. It's just free videos just to help you on this journey. You can text FAITH to the number 936-218-2762. And that will just get sent to you completely free. It's literally just to help you on this journey. Maybe you're here this morning and say, I am saved, but I need to pick me up. I want some encouragement during the week. You as well can text FAITH to that number. And that'll come to you and be some encouragement to you this week. Amen. Well, you can go ahead and stand up this morning. We have some really exciting things happening out there. We've already gotten the popcorn ready, the snow cones ready, the cotton candy ready, and your kids are going to be really excited about it. Amen. So not only do we have a great VBS happen this past week, and your kids did a great job, but we have some great things coming up, like we talked about Perry Stone Conference is coming up. Woo, woo. Yay, Perry Stone. Um, also, we have our midweek starting back every week instead of fam nights like the summer this Sunday starts back at our own campuses so we're going to have an awesome time this Wednesday at 7 p.m. of worship and prayer and a lot of other things and as well we want to be praying over the kids uh, this Wednesday for them going back to school how many y'all know our kids can be a light wherever they go no matter what age they are the Holy Ghost they get is not a junior Holy Ghost they get the whole thing and they can do powerful things wherever they're at so we're going to be praying over our kids and getting them ready for going back to school and just making sure that they are um, backed by us as parents and us as a church and as you go I have to always remind you because it, as you go you are a preacher 
As you go, you are the preacher to the world around you. Share everything God has put inside of you. Do not hold back. Do not let life or the enemy keep you from preaching the gospel to all creation by not just using your life, but also your words. As you go, I want to encourage you. Everything God has given you, let's just pray about it. God, I just declare that we will go out and we will reach people for the kingdom of God, that because we were in Kroger's, God, somebody got prayed for, somebody got saved. Because we passed in that drive through line, somebody got encouraged, God. Use us to go out and take initiative, God, to either pass out tickets or share what God is doing in our lives with those around us, with the world who has lost, God. I pray right now just for an encouragement that we are the ones sharing the gospel, God. Let us do it uh, vigorously and with strength in Jesus' name. And everyone said amen and amen. Y'all go have fun. Get some food. Have fun hanging out. We will see you guys uh, Wednesday or Sunday morning at 11 a.m.